Can you tie in a little bit the idea that when human beings have high levels of testosterone, a lot of times that can lead to a lot of aggressive behavior? And how does that relate to this whole concept? It's not so much the testosterone that leads to the aggressive behavior. The idea is that there may already exist within those individuals <clears throat> certain negative and fear-based belief systems that the testosterone chemically amplifies and magnifies. It's sort of the idea that it's similar to the concept of money on your planet. It's not that money corrupts individuals when they have a lot of it. It's that those negative and fear-based beliefs already exist within them and the sudden acquisition of a lot of money in your society magnifies and amplifies the negativity that was already within them. So chemically speaking, testosterone sort of does the same thing. It doesn't mean that it has to do that. It doesn't cause that to happen, but it may magnify what is already there. In the positive sense, testosterone can lead to a lot of high energy, assertive, creative acts. So again, it depends on what's already in the visual as a belief system that the testosterone and other hormones and chemicals may magnify and amplify to reveal to them that they have these beliefs within them. And therefore, it's important for them to pause in any aggressiveness that they may be demonstrating to find out what those belief systems are and let them go so they can use the testosterone in their system in a much more positive and constructive way. And you're expanding that a little bit more. Also, our society, at least Western culture, seems to be quite excited by video games that give people a chance to express a lot of violence. Can you give us some idea of how that's impacting the individual and the society? Well, of course, in different ways, according to different individuals. But the idea overall, on the positive end, can be that you have created a tool that allows people to take out their aggressions in a way that doesn't actually harm society. So that's one positive way of looking at it. <clears throat> now, of course, if they don't get in touch with the fact that there are lessons for them to learn about why their behavior seems so attracted to that, why they are attracted to extremely aggressively violent games, <clears throat> If they learn the lesson of why they're doing that, then they may be able to benefit from that. If it just becomes an addiction and a cycle, well, again, they may not be learning the lessons that are inherent for them to learn about themselves because they're simply being distracted by the game and they're not willing to look within. They're in a state of denial about themselves. But again, at least on a positive note, <clears throat> they're not taking out those aggressive behaviors on actual members of your society. Does that also apply to like sports, the way that our country is so excited about football games and in some that case, idea? In some cases, yes, not all, but in some cases, yes. Again, please, all of you remember, there are positive and negative aspects that are capable of being expressed in everything. So just remember that caveat and you will be able to answer your own questions. It depends. What energetic principles can a person apply to deepen and harmonize their closest relationships without controlling outcomes? Well, if you really want relationships to be what they're designed to do, you will not be interested in controlling them. You will be interested in learning from them, in seeing reflections, in absorbing and helping and serving the others in the relationships to be who they really truly need to be, to be the best version of themselves they can be while allowing them to show you what you need to know so you can absorb information that will allow you to be the best version of who it is you need to be. So it's not about control because you would understand that trying to control it would be defeating the purpose of the relationship to begin with because you understand that relationships are for the purpose of getting information and reflections and experiences that allow you to figure out more of who you are and express more of who you are. So why would you wanna control it? Again, it's the ego thinking, it knows exactly what the outcome is supposed to be, exactly what's supposed to happen. This is hubris. 
This is egotistical. This is the idea that you don't trust the way things unfold. You have to allow yourself to understand you set up your life path and you have to have enough of a relationship and awareness of the relationship with your soul to know that your soul knew what it was doing when it laid out the life path. You are the one that gets to experience that. And again, if you approach the challenges, including relationships, in the way we have said, with calmness, confidence, curiosity, and creativity, it won't be an issue of control. It will be an issue of learning. It will be an issue of accepting. It will be an issue of allowing. And your life will start to flow. You will learn the lessons you need to learn to improve who you are, to grow who you are, to expand who you are. And then your life will feel fulfilled and all the relationships will serve a purpose in your life in the way that they are designed to do so. So again, remember people that try to control the outer reality feel out of control and therefore they need to look within and understand why are they choosing to feel out of control? What belief systems are causing them to feel disconnected, detached and out of control? But also remember that any feeling of being out of control is being controlled by them. So they're never actually out of control. They're just choosing to believe that they're out of control. And therefore, that belief that they're out of control causes an individual in your reality to try and control the only thing they can, which is the outer world and all relationships in that outer world. And what is the distortion that is at the heart of fear? Um, how can we move beyond fear and become fearless? Again, the idea is you make fear your friend. Fear is a messenger knocking on your door saying, hey, you're holding on to a belief that's out of alignment with who you are. You're flowing your energy, filtering your energy through a belief that is not in alignment with your true soul vibration. So the idea is making fear your friend, making it your emissary, your messenger to let you know, to alert you, your little alarm clock to alert you. Hey, you're flowing your energy where you don't prefer to do that. Find out what that belief is and let it go so you can flow your energy through beliefs that are more in alignment with who you prefer to be. So say thank you, fear, for bringing that to my attention. So you can use the positive aspect of fear as an alert system, a security system, to alert you to when you may be flowing energy through a belief that doesn't work for you. 